Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Trump about to drop Moab on armed leftist mobs. Violence strikes ahead of Kavanaugh confirmation. From the very beginning of all of this, the threats of violence, intimidation, and harassment have come from the left. Remember that as this continues to devolve into actual confrontations, it would make no difference who was nominated to the Supreme Court by President Trump. Something similar to what is happening now would play out and it probably won't end well. Leftists, such as Antifa and Smash Racism DC, are now calling for violence if Brett Kavanaugh is ultimately confirmed to the Supreme Court as an associate justice. The below threads base their call for violence strikes ahead of or after Kavanaugh's confirmation on the overturning of Roe v. Wade which legalized abortion. That's just an excuse though. They plan to get their violence on regardless I would imagine. It's what they do. Immediately after Thursday's Senate Judiciary Committee hearing with Judge Kavanaugh and his accuser, leftists on Twitter began discussing the need for a violent general strike if he were to be confirmed. There is a good possibility they might not even wait that long. These threats come just days after Senator Ted Cruz, RTX, and his wife Heidi were surrounded by smash racism DC in a DC restaurant and threatened. After that, the group proceeded to make credible threats against the lives of Senator Cruz, Judge Kavanaugh, President Trump, and others from their Twitter and Facebook accounts. Crickets in the media. However, I take them at their word and I find this very alarming. The original tweet and threat on this came from someone who has a large following on Twitter. Emily Gorsinski is a data scientist and a left-wing activist. She proceeded to ask her 32,000 followers if the confirmation of Kavanaugh would finally be enough for them to organize a violent general strike, not just a general strike but a violent one. Emily is a very outspoken supporter of Antifa and she's all in for their violent tactics. The woman claims to be an anarchist but naturally gravitates towards communism. Emily also supports Smash Racism DC, the violent group that surrounded Cruz and his wife and threatened them. Emily seems to be very much like most on the left, spouting the same kind of rhetoric you hear from them. But as I said, she has a large following on Twitter and she is one of only 3,641 people that is followed by Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey and one of 503 people followed by the Southern Poverty Law Center's Hate Watch account. A number of her followers seem to be enthused by her call to violence against the right from Far Left Watch. One Twitter user, claiming to be a member of the Far Left Militia Organization, Redneck Revolt, quote tweeted Emily saying that he didn't join Redneck Revolt for no reason, the implication, of course, being that he is down for armed political violence. Redneck Revolt is mostly comprised of communist, socialists, and other far-left activists. They claim to have over 30 active cells nationwide and until recently they offered a downloadable guerrilla warfare manual on their website that included sections on kidnapping, executions, and terrorism. The recent spike in violent rhetoric from the far-left is not a departure from the norm, it is a return to it. Far-left political ideologies, like all forms of authoritarianism, are fully dependent on the use of violence from their proponents and ultimately from the state which they always seek to expand and grant more centralized power. Considering that just over a year ago a far-left extremist opened fire on a GOP congressional baseball practice game, I sincerely hope our reporting results in an investigation by the authorities. The Democrats fully support Antifa and others such as Smash Racism DC. Democratic Socialists of America are also in that mix that is supported by the left. Several of their members were just elected to office as Democrats. This is certainly not the first time that Antifa has called for violence. They just recently called for the killing of border enforcement as well. From Newsweek An Antifa activist compared the Immigration and Customs Enforcement to the Gestapo and called for the slaughter of the fascistic Border Patrol dogs and their bosses. In an article published on Thursday on the far-left website Incendiary News, Antifa activist Ulrika Salazar compared ICE officers to shadowy Gestapo agents who take away young boys and girls, tear apart families, throw away undesirables into dark and cramped dungeons. The author also wrote that he hopes this chapter in American history will also include the moment when revolutionaries rose up with the masses and slaughtered the fascistic border patrol dogs and their bosses, slaying them with revolutionary fire and justice. Watch for President Trump to come down hard on these violent leftists should they pull anything they threaten. They won't know what hit them. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.